Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at fantasyfootballprofit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today, we're going to, we decided we're going to talk a little Debo Samuel. News came down earlier today that Debo has requested a trade from San Francisco. I know they've been uh, dealing with some contract issues. It doesn't sound like they're probably anywhere close. And Debo doesn't want to play for San Francisco anymore. He wants to go somewhere else. So we just kind of want to talk about what that could mean, what, what teams could go for him, what it would mean for San Francisco, what it would mean for Debo even. So, Jeff, first thoughts. What do you? I don't even know how this would play out. If I mean, a lot of these things have lately, people, once they request a trade, it seems to go down. San Francisco did say they're not going to trade him, but that's just – that's one of their ways to, Hey, you're going to have to offer us some good, something good to get him, Right. Kind of a deal. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, my, my initial reaction was, is this a way to get a, a, a giant contract and, and before be. his rookie contract is over. Right. So um, there's probably a lot of jostling. He had a monster year last year. He was, he was amazing. He really was. I think he was uh, in, in fantasy. He was the second best wide receiver um, in the NFL. He was a, I mean, you know, not only does he catch a ton of passes, I think he had 127 targets. If I remember the stats that I just looked up, but um, he also ran the ball like 50 times or so. So he was very productive. There's a lot of moving parts to this one. So my initial reaction is why is he actually doing it? Um, but assuming he's serious about it, because I think you're right. Usually as soon as you do that, it's it's going to happen unless they just force you to stay mm-hmm. and then you leave after that. So you pray you don't get hurt, right? Um, so, so assuming that is going to go down, I mean, they're the best course of action for San Fran is to bite the bullet and do it before the mm-hmm. draft, because you can get a lot of draft capital, which would free up so many opportunities as far as yep. fantasy goes. Um, in, in that mindset, I mean, who do you th- like, what do you actually think he's worth? Because that would determine the landing spot as if, you know, where he could end up. Well, he's, he's interesting, right? Because like you said, the running ability, all this other stuff he does, it's more than just, he's more than I feel like just a regular receiver than because of it. So some of the teams you could look at that have these, I mean, he's worth a first round pick at this point. What, what level of that first round pick, we don't know, but like the Jets have a few in the first round. The Lions have a few in the first round. Those are some teams already mentioned that they yeah. could, you know, those first round picks in, to be honest, if you're like the Jets, I don't remember exactly where they're picking now, 10, 10th-ish, and they have a few in the top 10. I feel like that kind of – and they want a receiver. Like when we did the react to the Mel Kuyper mock, they had Drake London going to Jets. Why not use that pick, trade that pick to get Debo? I mean, yeah. you know you're getting a guy who can play. That's- here's, a, here's a question, and yeah, 100%. And before we, we go any further, you're absolutely correct. I, that's immediately where I went, is who has multiple first-round picks, right? So the yep. list goes Detroit Lions, Houston Texans, Green Bay Packers, Kansas City Chiefs, New Orleans Saints, Philly, uh, the Eagles, New York Giants, and New York Jets. So 100%, and you're right with New York Jets, have the most to offer up because they have two top 10 picks. Mm-hmm. Which one you would actually give up for Debo? I don't think it really matters as far as the top 10 goes. Um, But on top of giving them that, because right away you're kind of like, you know, you see a lot of players go for multiple picks and you're kind of like, would Debo be worth more than just one first round? Would someone throw in a first and a third or some crazy, you know, we could even go further than that. But you also have to pay the guy. Like he is going to want a contract right away. You're not getting off cheap. So pretty much you're trading for him and then you have to pay him like he's a free agent. So you're not, you know, so a first round pick in, in what you're talking about, very true. The Jets is a, a, I don't know if he's a good landing spot for him, but if the Jets wanted him bad enough, throwing out a first round pick to get a guaranteed asset that Zach Wilson can use and they can use him in multiple different ways makes a lot of sense to me. But at the same time, you're going to have to pay this guy like Devonte Adams money. Maybe not quite that much, but it's going to have to be up there. So. It has to be a, a place where they have that kind of cap space. I mean, he saw what all these guys just got, what what Tyreek got, what what Adams got, what Christian Kirk got, you know, <laughs> from what his level is, right? He saw all that and he's like, hey, look what I'm doing. And he doesn't want to put his body through another year like that where he's running the ball too. Or is he, I mean, get paid now, right? Get paid. That's what he wants to do. And right. it feels like by him, I don't, 
if, if money's the only issue and all San Francisco has to do is give him more money, that'll probably happen. But I don't think at this point, it's probably not even an issue. If he wants to be gone, he's going to be gone. That's just how it works. Yeah, that, that's what was so confusing about me. And this brought up a few questions in my mind. And I, I want to see where your head is at. We can talk about it like in reality and as far as fantasy goes. But uh, the number one, like we'll, we'll take it off the board, assuming is not a negotiating tactic, right? So we'll say okay. that's not anymore. Uh, there was a report that he didn't like how he was being used. Very, very strange. But does that mean he doesn't want to run the ball? And if he doesn't want to run the ball, that hurts his, See, his stock, right? Yes. And that's that's my other part of this is even, okay, let's say he did get traded. Well, yeah, what's that do? I'm not so sure that outside of, you know, the Shanahan offense that he's going to be as successful. I'm not sure he will. That offense was made for him. And they, they used him in all kinds of ways. Will anybody else be able to do that? I don't think they would, to be honest. I, I think he's in one of the best situations he possibly could be in. The only other one that I think would be great for him, which isn't going to be an option, would be Miami because they have his former offensive coordinator. But that's not going to happen. They just signed Tyreek. That's not happening. Right. That right. would have been perfect. If they didn't get Tyreek, that would have been the perfect spot. I don't yes. know if there is. I think San Francisco is the best spot for him fantasy-wise. That's 100% where he should be if he wanted would- to be a fantasy star. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree if they use them in the same way. But my, I guess the, the worry is because the offensive coordinator took off to Miami is, yeah. um, and you're about to get a new, you know, a new starting QB. On top of that, he had the greatest year you could possibly probably have. Like he broke so many big runs. He had, I think, I, I would have to I, I look it up right now. Should I? Um, his running stats are ridiculous on the percentage he was able to get uh or you know turn into a touchdown he had eight, and, t- eight touchdowns on 59 carries thank you yes yeah eight, eight touchdowns on 59 carries that was pretty ridiculous he did only have six receiving but i don't see that getting all that much better but he had 1400 yards it was ridiculous 121 mm-hmm. targets i was a little off on that earlier i apologize and he caught 77 of them so with trey lance being the starter more than likely um, and his numbers being what they were, it does feel like this is a moment where he says, man, this is going to be the peak of where I'm at. And he, I think he only missed one game. This is the peak of where I'm at. I want to get paid for what I'm capable of doing. And, and my stats are going to go down, even if I stay, which, you know, I agree with you. I think San Fran, because they'll try to use him the same way. He's comfortable in the system, blah, blah, blah. I do think that this would be his best case scenario to re- try to repeat those numbers. I was already, uh, I don't want to say a hater. I was already a doubter, right? He was already, yeah. I was already talking about him as he's going to be the guy I'm not going to draft because he's far too high. I don't, I think he's going to regress regardless. And then I, I also don't, I'm not a true believer in Trey Lance quite yet. Um, give me in a couple of years and maybe he turns into a different quarterback, but right now he looks like a very young quarterback. So in saying all of that, but assuming he is going to go somewhere else, if you had one of those few landing spots, so you say the Jets would be number one because they have what is needed to, you know, yeah. put them up there. If if these teams can try to work out a deal ahead of time, which I'm sure they're trying to do, mm-hmm. Green Bay, if they don't have to pay Devontae Adams numbers and they get that number one back, they also have multiple number one picks. And everyone is saying that, you know, this would be the year that they're going to spend it on a guy. This feels more appropriate for them, even though it doesn't feel like the that team would actually pay that type of contract because it's going to be so large. Yeah. But I think that's just what's going to happen. I think everyone's going to get paid ridiculous sums of money. So unless you want to go out and you believe in one of the rookies, Debo would be a really good stopgap for that, right? Yeah, if any of these teams, if they can use that first-round pick and get Debo, that's what you do. It, 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 like with the Packers, I think that's something they should try to do. If they could get it pay the money because you know what you only have a certain you only have a few year window left that's it just yeah spend it now and try it now that's what i would do i mean kansas city's another one that would be out there the thing is would they go i think it would fit and they would use them right but does that make sense they just traded tyree because they weren't going to pay him are they going to then go get another guy they're going to pay once again he would have to take a uh a he would have to get a, a contract not as big as Devontae or Tyreek, which yeah, more, in, my, in my mind makes sense. But right now it feels like he is he's saying, pay me like that. Yeah. So I can't see Chiefs going and trading first round pick to get a guy to pay him what they would have paid Tyreek. To me, doesn't doesn't add up. No. The, I don't see it. The other team that does have multiple picks that 
feels like it would make sense to me for multiple reasons would be New Orleans. The Saints desperately need um, another guy, right? We don't know what is happening with Thomas. We don't know what's happening with Kamara. They feel like they're in this really weird limbo space, even though they've been able to do pretty decent. But if Kamara is gone for off the field reasons for a while, if Thomas isn't quite the same player he was, and you have Jameis Winston, does it make sense to say, hey, we want that guaranteed guy that can not only catch the ball, but we can put him in the backfield when Kamara is suspended. If he does get suspended, we can throw in a bunch of trick plays with, you know, Peyton, which he, you know, he's a very, very good offensive mind. It does feel like that type of plug and play, like uh, utility player that can do it all would fit in that team because their needs are unknown at the moment. Do you agree? Do you think there's any chance that he might go to Saints? It, it could. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know if they feel like they have the, the quarterback to do it. I don't know if you want to make that kind of move right now. That's that's it. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd like that one as much. I don't know what James is going to do, but, I, but maybe. I'm trying to think of what I even feel is the best. Uh, I, I just don't, I don't see that one as much. I don't know if they're going to go, go try to pull that off. I can see, I don't know. The Packers would be great for, for him, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that Kansas, would be Kansas city would be great. I just, I was, Tell me, I mean, be honest here. Is the Green Bay Packers a, that was the only one in my head. I was like, if they actually pulled it off and they, and they did that, that would be the only place where I'm like, I think that would rival his output in San Fran. It, in a way, I just don't know about like goal line running. If he's going to get any carries down there. Cause they got and Jones. I don't think he Dylan. will. True. Very true. And he had yeah. eight touchdowns running the ball. And that's, but here's the thing. He only had six catching. You have to believe he's going to catch 10. And that's like he would be. Uh, the he target. can make it up. I feel it. He would be the main guy. Um, yeah. Obviously, he, who is their main guy right now? Is it Sammy Watkins? I don't. I mean, what is it like? <laughs> so I, you know, <laughs> Just, uh, my body did rejected they, the Sammy did Watkins. They si- did they sign anybody else? I'm forgetting about. It seems pretty ugly right now. That you know, from what I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They did. Oh wow, it is Sammy Watkins. Or, yeah, it or, is. Or is it Alan Lazard? Or is yeah, it I mean, Randall Cobb? We, oh, we have to be, we have to believe that he's going. They're going to draft a guy, and whether it be in the yeah. first round or I would, you have to believe that they're going to do it in a, a first round pick. Mm-hmm. And there's so many guys here that whoever we talked about this, whoever they get, we we're going to like a lot. If Debo goes to Green Bay, say, all right, well we're back. Um, Got to love hotel Wi Fi, but all right, where, where where were we at, Jeff? What were we talking about? <laughs> So I was asking you the question of depending on where Debo Samuel goes, if he does go to another team and we'll start at San Fran, right? Stays with the team. That's where you think he's going to be most successful. Then we'll go on down. Where, how, where do you think the tiers are? I think I was a little lower on him. I don't know where you are, but a lot of people are high. So where would you draft him right now after knowing where he's at? And then how, how far can he slide down the draft boards because of all of this going on? So yeah, San Francisco, he's, he's, he's top 10. Yeah. In my mind. He's a top, top 10 top receiver. 10 wide receiver. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have him as a top 10 wide receiver. Probably no doubt if he's in San Francisco, I don't see anything changing my mind on that. Let's say if he goes to um, Kansas city, let's say they pulled that off. They decided, I don't think it's going to happen. Let's say they do. I actually think they would use him quite a bit and in roles. Cause they used to use Tyreek in this way too. They'd, they'd give Tyreek the ball. I can see them finding creative ways to use Debo. I don't think I'd downgrade him too much. I think he's still a top 10 receiver to me, to be honest. I'll just pull up fantasy pros real quick. Debo is fifth right now in the current ranks. So he would still be like top 10-ish for me for San Francisco and Kansas City both because I just think he would get that running ability. I think t- Kansas City doesn't have the running backs that are going to stop Debo from getting the ball. That's pretty much how I feel. If he went to the Packers, that's where I might start to downgrade him more to a top 15 type player because I don't think those rushing touchdowns are going to be there. And that's what I would feel about. I think Jones and Dylan are too good. He's going to, they're going to get rushing ability. If it's jets, if it's lions, um, still probably, I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think I get beyond. And I don't know. Jets would use him. Lions, Lions. I'm still thinking actually Packers might be, I don't know. I don't want him on the Jets, but I don't know if they would be, it wouldn't be as bad fantasy wise. It could be similar to the Packers, to be honest with you. He'd be the guy they try to use, or because teams shut it down. It's hard to say. I mean, yeah, I mean, you he is like, the guy, but you look at I volume. Mean, how much, how much at, is that offense going yeah. to score? 
I know, right? So he's probably, I just, I think he would still be top 15 for me no matter where he goes. That's where I think I'm at. Okay. Um, the other end of this, the other side of the coin is going to be, assuming he is traded, what does this do to everyone else on San yes. Fran? So for San Francisco, this is, I, I believe this is a huge benefit for Elijah Mitchell and because they already don't have most or Samuel's, I feel like Samuel's his competition right now. Debo is <laughs> Mitchell's competition. If they don't have him, I can just see Elijah Mitchell getting a lot more you know, getting those rushing touchdowns, which getting that goal line work, which he would lose a lot. And as last year, as a Elijah Mitchell owner, I'd get upset about that. Like there's Debo getting the ball. And that would actually, as somebody who has Elijah Mitchell in keeper leagues, I want Debo gone. I do. I think Elijah yeah, Mitchell. Would I mean, be a huge eight touchdowns right there. I mean, yeah. we can make an argument that Trey Lance will take some of those, he could, he could. <laughs> but he could. you know, not, not nearly as many. He's not going to be as potent as Debo was last year. Yep. It's going to be interesting, though, if San Francisco were to do this, they got to get somebody in there because they don't have depth at wide receiver. They need somebody else. It's Debo and it's Brandon Ayuk right now. Juwan Jennings is their three. Yeah. And, and, and Kittle, Ayuk obviously, is, but yeah. And I, Ayuk is the other guy uh, wanted to mention for sure because he automatically turns into the number one, right? And he had a lot of heat on him before when Debo was hurt and then Ayuk was hurt and he's shown flashes. What he's able to do in that offense with Trey Lance, you know, behind center, I don't really know, but I do like Ayuk, and that would definitely push him. That, that should jumpstart his career, like once again, it, yeah. it should. The other question would be um, more than likely they either get a wide receiver in the trade, say for the the thing that I saw was like Mims, Denzel Mims, and a first rounder from the Jets, right? If Mims and they say they go out and they get one of the top three, four wide receivers in the draft, do like probably more of the rookie wide receiver because we, we you know, we're, we're coming probably down on Mims. He hasn't been able to do anything. But if they get one of the top wide receivers on that team, what is his outlook all of a sudden going to a team where he's going to be number two all of a sudden? I don't know if I would, maybe he's going to be improved from where they are, but I don't know how much that passing offense is how good they're going to be. Yeah. That's, I don't, I don't trade Lance. I'm not so sure about. So uh, on the offense, are you just, they trade Debo and you're all in on Elijah Mitchell. Obviously you like Kittle still, but he's probably, does he move up at all in your mind actually? Probably not from me, not in tight ends, he's, maybe, he, but just like, you have him at three, two or three right now. Yeah. He's going to be, I don't even, I don't really know yeah. exactly, but he's probably, he's, he's, he's in the top three, right? Right. Right. At this point, so I don't think, I don't think much, up. I don't think much changes with him at least. Um, I'm just quick. I was just quick looking to see quick before we there's just, if there's any other teams that were, we, we've talked about the main teams that people are talking about the jets, the Packers, the chiefs, right. And then a couple other names that the ringer put out other, you know, the lions are showing up on a lot of these lists. The other couple names Colts. I've seen a couple places now. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's not the worst, but Jonathan Taylor, it's like the, there'd be no fantasy wise, the running ability goes away. Cause why, right. you know, they have Jonathan Taylor. Eagles show up on all these kids for every wide receiver. Don't love it, but don't hate it necessarily because they're I, running. I just, I just don't get it. No, I mean, like I, I, if, if the Eagles really want to do that, I hope they would use them correctly, mm-hmm. but you have like a scrambling well, can... quarterback. You have, you have a couple of young wide receivers that just need time. You have well, a good they... tight end. You, yeah. I feel like you have the pieces. And then the thing you kind of need is that, that running back you really trust. And you don't want to put Debo in that spot. Like you, yep. you don't want him to only be a running back. Well, so I don't, I just don't like that one. Yeah. Eagles have picks 15 and 18. They could use one of those. Maybe they could, maybe they throw in Jalen Rager with it. You know, I mean, that's true. They could just cut ties with Rager immediately. Yep. Atlanta Falcons show up, but I don't want that for him. I mean, <laughs> they, they would, they would use him right. If they used him like they use Cordero, but they'd still have Cordero. So yeah. I mean, also that team is, I mean, yeah. Oof. I mean, I mean, yeah. Mariota and, I'm not sure where that would be a terrible thing for Debo. And, and he, he he has a rookie contract, so it's not like he can yeah. say no to anything. He asked for a trade. I mean, he's kind of at the whim of San yep. Fran. Like whoever all he can do is biggest, yeah. It, all he can do is hold out if they don't trade him. Um, yeah. And the other, the only other team that shows up is the Texans. And please no. I know another one where careers go to die. Yep. And the only interesting one too about Green Bay is not only do I I not think that they would probably do that to pay him. In, in whatever way that I think they're going to be okay with just drafting a couple of guys, but they are actually 
like they're on the same side. <laughs> like, you know, they are like San Fran would have to go through Green Bay. Do you think yeah. that would come into it? They're not in the same, they're not in the same, it, you know, division. Honestly, but, that or really of, could. I think that's a really good point. I don't I mean San Francisco, Green Bay in the playoffs, that happens all the time, too. Yeah. I, they've both been very good. I mean, do they think they're gonna get back there right away? That that would be the question. Like, because th- they would also have to, how long is Aaron Rodgers going to play? Like, can we overtake them in three years? <laughs> like, in my head, that's kind of what I'd be thinking. I wouldn't be thinking next year. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know if they do that one. I don't know if they trade him there. But yeah. all right. Well, there we go. A lot of potential lane spots. It'd be interesting to see how this plays out. But all right, I think that's enough for Debo. But maybe we'll talk more next week about him, actually. Next week, it's draft. NFL draft next Thursday. So we'll definitely have some draft talk next yes. week and see where, you know, stuff plays out. If Debo's going to get traded, he's probably going to have to be traded before the draft. To to, to, otherwise, it's going to be, you know. You would have to be, right? Because if, if, he, if he doesn't get traded, you know that they're going to be playing hardball and they're going to be like, yep. you're going to take a contract or you're going to be waiting out the year. And then he's yep. going to be, you know, just in pain with how much they're using him. Yep. We'll see. Yeah. If they don't get, if the deal doesn't happen before the draft, I can see holdout happening. So, yeah. All right, there we go. That's it. Talk to you guys next time.